Welcome to day two of our soon to be supercharged C63 AMG build. We have an astronomical amount of work to do to this engine to get it ready for boost. And that means in this video, this engine needs to go from this all the way to this and get some much needed strength reinforcements that you may not have ever seen on this kind of engine before. Of course, I'm gonna show you a few tricks along the way. And if you guys enjoy good old fashioned gasoline engine car content, filled with straight wrenching and no fluff, then consider subscribing to the channel. We've gained a ton of new viewers in the last two months, but not everybody has subscribed. So if you guys wanna support what I do here at Legit Street Cars, the absolute best way to do that is to click that little red or white subscribe button. I don't even remember what color it is. So enjoy the show and thank you guys so much. So with that, Rusty and I are on the engine. Craig is working on a fuel system. We are gonna be going at this for probably the next 10 or 12 hours. So cheers, brother. Let's get this done. So right now, Rusty and I are working on getting this engine on an engine stand so we can flip it upside down because we need to remove the lower oil pan. All right, so I am working on the front accessories here. We can do this on the stand as well, but why not make it lighter? And he's working on transmission bolts. So these balancers aren't pressed on or anything, but sometimes they just need a little bit of pry bar from both sides to get them to go. Okay. Balancers off. As you guys are gonna see throughout this video, there's gonna be a ton of wow you're in there. So we're replacing all of the pulleys. Right now, Rusty's removing the bolts for the wet clutch. So this is the same seven speed that was in the older ones, except it doesn't have a torque converter. It's water pump time. And we'll get the pulley out of here. Just makes it easier to get to some of these bolts. There we go. More coolant, more coolant. No, oh, not too bad, we're good. Look at this big chunk we get to remove. And if you guys saw the first video, you know I got two big boxes from my friends at FCP Euro. I'll drop a link down below, fcpeuro.com. If you guys need any car parts for your European vehicle, they have what you need. And in this video, we're gonna start installing all of this stuff. And yes, they still have the lifetime replacement guarantee. You send them an old part back and you get a new one back for free. It's crazy. We have one more bolt for the power steering pump right back here. And there are four other bolts holding this guy in. This is the most secure power steering pump you've ever seen. Next is the AC compressor. It's got three bolts. I loosen this up with my fingers. I'm just kidding. 10 mil ratcheting wrench. Makes life really easy with these. There's not a lot of room with the subframe. Right, AC compressor is going away for now. One last pulley and we are done with accessories. And we only have these two top bolts left for the transmission. And then most people would use a cherry picker, but Rusty and I are not like most people. We're just gonna manhandle this guy. I'm about to throw this engine right off the table. There we go. There we go. Oh. Ah. Rusty and I have an idea, guys. We have an idea. We were gonna use the cherry picker, but I don't think we need to. Especially with all this oil on the table, this thing just slides around and we can lift it. If you wanna go ahead and start lifting. Oh, this is totally gonna work. <laughs> A little more. Okay, there we go. This is how we do it. <laughs> Dude, we are on. There we go, okay. And we'll get a bolt in here. We're gonna take the engine mount bolt off the top. There goes the starter. Are we clear? Yep. We did it. I don't need no stinking cherry picker. Harness is coming off right now before we flip this engine or really do anything. There we go. In the last 24 hours, we took our perfectly good C63. It drove right into the stall with no issues. And, and this is now what we have. The engine is completely stripped down and we're ready to remove some oil pans and strip it down some more. We're flipping the engine around right now. Here we can see our oil pan and it was starting to leak a little bit right there. I believe that is coming from this section right here. 
yeah, you can see the oil leak starting in here getting a little bit wet. So this is a uh, good timing anyway. This is a complete nightmare in the car and most people just take the entire engine out anyway to reseal that half, but we need to take that off primarily to get the front cover off to get these timing chain guides. The pans are RTB'd in. This one is held in by a few T30s. Once you get them all out, they give you this section of the oil pan that helps you lift up the oil pan. And it does that. It breaks the seal so you don't have to get pry bars in here and go crazy bending the pan. And then you just use a little pry bar to bend the pan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we can easily break the seal loose without going crazy on the oil pan. And this is what we have. Very nice and clean inside. Don't suspect any issues. I don't know why I even say stuff like that. Just look in the engine, Alex. Don't say anything. You drink yourself like every time. But seriously, we should be good. This is a good engine. We're not gonna find anything like we did with that. Or with that. Or with that. Or with that. Sometimes engines don't like me. How can I forget the first blown engine car on this channel? The Turbo Trans Am, like seven years ago. One of my first, I don't know, five videos was about this thing eating bearings at the track and then having to disassemble the whole thing and rebuilding it all. But that engine is still in here and it's still good. Rusty just removed these bolts. So this other little oil pan is ready to come off. There's lots of oil pans here. Lots of failure points too. All right, how's that screen? In the last engine that we used, there was bits of guide inside of here. And this one looks totally clean. I don't suspect any issues with the guides on this particular engine. Uh, on most of these M156s, the guides and the timing chains are fine. These don't have an issue where they stretch or anything like that, but we have seen some guides lose a couple little pieces in here, not cause any issues yet, but you know, we got the engine out. So while we're in there, we're gonna definitely put new guides in. They are about 10 years old. And a lot of times time can ruin the timing chain guides because the plastic gets brittle and, and then cracks. Anytime Rusty and I can double team something, we definitely wanna take advantage. We are on a crazy time crunch, guys. It's Tuesday and this car has to be on the dyno on Friday. We have to build a fuel system still. We still have to build the engine too, that's something. There's about 5,000 things that can go wrong too. One little error and we're dead in the water. All right, she's off. Yep. It's definitely leaking from here. We had a little bit of an oil leak in this area here, so we're definitely gonna fix that. The inside of the crankcase looks so good, and that's probably because I maintain all of my cars with AMSOIL. I think this is the best engine oil on the market. I'm gonna leave you guys a link down below where you can become one of my preferred customers and get 25% off. They have the oil in many different flavors, including the Z-Rod for older cars that need a little bit more zinc. They have oil filters, coolant, brake fluid, transmission fluid, gear oil, all sorts of different additives. You know how much I love my mud slinger and I use the heavy duty metal protector on all of my cars to prevent them from rusting. Oh, and even if you guys use a different oil, do yourself a favor and use the hemsoil.com website. It's amazing. This is how much you save when you become a preferred customer. It's massive. It gets shipped to your door, but they show specifications for everything. So it'll tell you what weights you can use depending on the temperature. It'll tell you how much to fill your oil. It'll even give you exact instructions on how to check. And they do this for the coolant as well. So no more guesswork going to different forums and getting bad information. And they have it for everything, including the transmission. This is for my E55. So save 25% on the entire website and become a legit streetcar's preferred customer by clicking on the link down below. Next up is the front cover and lots of bolts go all the way around and that is glued on as well there aren't too many actual seals on this engine front cover coming off there we go all right wow this seal is really hard this is a thermostat seal and it is very brittle it's torn from us pulling it off but okay Glad we're doing this. Not that we would have had to pull the front timing cover to get to the seal, but that's the one for the actual thermostat right here. So we would have had to pull the thermostat and I'm actually surprised that we didn't have any issues with this being stuck open or anything with that seal. It was pretty mangled. It's nice doing this when the engine is flipped this way. So here we can see a total of two chains. We have the main timing chain right here and this one here is for the oil pump. So it has two little gears, a few guides and a spring right here. So we're gonna swap 
this out as well. But overall, these guides look really nice. Now there's nothing wrong with these. We probably could have left everything, the guides and the chain, but uh, you know, we're engines out. So right now we are going to loosen up the oil pump. And with that loosened up, we can remove this little timing chain. So we'll push this down by hand, prop that up. There we go. Give us just enough slack. Now we have a nice little souvenir. Get this guide off. Okay, that's a necklace, definitely. And this is under a little bit of spring tension. We'll pop that back there. And then we can just pull it off like that. There we go. Guides and chain can come off all at the same time, basically. That. And we are gonna replace this gear right here. I usually just come right off. Little persuasion. Okay. Whew, this was on there pretty good. But we got it off and we are replacing it because there is rubber here that can fail. Don't see it too often, but this is a fairly inexpensive part. So if you're doing the chain, definitely replace this guy, but you can see in here, it's rubber. Here's our new gear. And what's nice about most Mercedes is that they are key weighed. There is the factory key. So this only goes on one way. It's going on a lot nicer now because I use a little bit of sandpaper here. You can see this spot right here, that's what was hanging us up, but all good. Hang on, before we go any further, let's reseal this plate. I've never seen one of these leak, but this is definitely leaking. It's just sealed with RTV. And to get to this, you gotta remove the timing cover. A couple of T30s hold this plate on. Not gonna lie, I don't know exactly what this is for. But maybe we'll find out together. Okay, all right, so this sprung out at me and I believe that this is a thermostat for the engine oil because the two cooler lines go in right here. And yeah, that's what this is. This is a thermostat, cool. I've never messed with this before, but we can fix the little oil leak that's coming from it. And before we do this, the engine needs a serious cleaning. Prep work and cleaning is very important when doing engine work as seals and RTV don't stick well to a dirty surface. So I started off by removing large pieces of RTV with a razor blade. And next I used a white plastic bristle disc on a drill with a low speed setting and very little pressure. These do a great Great job of cleaning without compromising the flat mating surface of the engine. And you don't want to use the green or red discs because they can actually remove metal material from your engine. For the 85,000 miles of carbon buildup on the pistons, I used a turbo and intake cleaner solution from CRC. I let that soak in for about 10 minutes and then used a few brushes and brake clean to make the pistons look brand spanking new. After that, I used the drill with the white plastic bristle disc on the head mating surface and a final rinse with brake clean and shop air. And this is our finished product. At this point in the job, I'm getting pretty excited to bolt on some new parts. And I cleaned it so well that you can literally eat off of this engine. So in order to be environmentally friendly and not waste a plate, I just put my food on the engine. Since, since it's that clean, I know I can eat it. These are very carb friendly. A lot of protein and super clean. Mm. I've got the engine turned around. That's why this is on this side now, but here goes our oil thermostat back in. And there's an O-ring here to replace as well. So that's good. And we need a little bit of RTV right here. And then we can reinstall our plate like so. All right, while you're holding this, you can tighten up your two T30s. A nice little hand tighten. And we'll wipe away any excess RTV as well. All right, that's resealed. Here's everything we're replacing behind the front timing cover, new guides, new chains, new spring, new tensioner, new everything. We already have two new seals installed in the front cover. If you guys are wondering, I do take a ton of pictures during the disassembly for little details like this. You see how the orange part of the guide curls over? You can see on the new part, it's right here. And we know that is gonna go right here instead of doing one of these. This is what we want. That's why I take pictures. Hang on, before we actually go together, let's put a little bit of engine assembly lube on this guide. There we go. And we have another guide going on right here. 
And one last guide that's gonna go on now. We still have this, but that'll go on later. In case you guys are wondering if the old timing chain stretched at all, it did not. It's absolutely perfect. This ain't no Audi or BMW, come on now. This is a pretty cool piece. This is an idler gear, so it spins and it has these little holes in there and oil goes inside and it sprays oil all over the chain and the guides. And it simply slides on like that. All right, it is chain time now. And we don't have to worry about any timing just yet. When we get the heads and the cams back together, we can do that. But this one goes here, this one goes there. There we go. Look at that. And it's spinning oil everywhere. It is oil pump chain time. Here's the new oil pump chain spring going on. Next, we have our new oil pump chain. We're gonna put it on the gear first then slide on our guide like that. Then we'll pull the chain up, apply our tensioner, and we have a new seal for the oil pump right here. All right, there we go. Now we can put our baby timing chain onto the oil pump gears, something like this. It's a little weird to get this on. There we go, okay, we're on. And then with the tension off, we can install the final guide Final guide down. Da -na 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 -na. That was good. <laughs> wow, that was really good. Welcome to Legit Street Cores. Legit <laughs> Street Idol. Oil pump bolts going back in. Look at this monstrosity of an oil pump, people. This can just pump all the oil in the world of this M156. Craig, did you just touch a bolt? Oh man, a couple of bolts for the oil pickup tubes. Look at how gigantic these are. This is a race motor, people. And we'll give these guys a hand tighten. And these deserve more than a hand tighten. They deserve a hand click. Click, click, and click. Don't worry, we're gonna torque the important stuff on this engine. And don't be fooled, these hand-built AMG engines are probably built like this too. There's a guy in Germany doing Klickenhausen. Couple clickbergs, you're good. So the front timing cover has these two seals and this one here, and the rest is RTV. Now there's a lot of RTV that goes on this front timing cover. And of course I took pictures of where the RTV goes on the engine so we can match it up with the front timing cover. Now general rule of thumb if you forgot to take a picture is really any of these shiny surfaces is what gets the RTV. So this right here would not. Uh, and then you wanna make sure to get around the bolt holes as well. See, Rusty doing one right there. And he's got a nice caulk gun that he's using. Look at those beads. Those are beautiful, beautiful beads, Rusty. Thank you. I'm known for my beautiful beads. As nice as Rusty's beads are, it's good to flatten out the RTV so you know it's kind of a little bit more consistent. And then it's covering all of the surfaces. And you make sure you don't miss anything. Doesn't have to be very thick either. Timing cover is all sealed up. This will never ever leak. Again, I don't, I don't know why I say stuff like this. Knock on front timing cover, it'll never leak. All right, Rusty is doing me the honor of holding the chains away. I will sneak this through your arms now. And I'm not saying you only have one chance at doing this, but you kind of do. You don't want to smear it up too much. You want to take your time on this part here. Okay, that dowel's in. There we go. Nice. That side on. Okay, good. All right, that's perfectly lined up. Now we need some bolts. Uh, we just have to get our bolts in, and I definitely took a picture of this as well. So many bolts, and this one. There we go. All right, everything is started. Let's turn this bad boy down a little. If any of these bolts stop before they rest up against the timing cover, you have the wrong bolt in. It's too long. Now I'm just going around torquing all of these, so satisfying. All right, front cover's done. Oil pan's resealed, ready to go on. And this was the one that had a little bit of a leak and leak no more. So many bolts. Rusty, bolts? Yep. So if you guys are wondering, this is the same day as when this video started. So all the work you've seen to this point is one full day. It's like 5 p.m. right now. And we started around, I don't know, 9.30 or so. Just in case you were wondering like real time what's going on here. And I'll keep you guys posted throughout this series on the real time of all these jobs so you know, because we're only here Monday through Friday to do this project, Dino, on Friday. Fingers crossed. That's the plan. We're gonna be at Cannonball Garage, but who knows? Lots of issues can come up. 
Go around torquing all of these now. You guys ever work on engines before? Like, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure involved in working on an engine because you can mess stuff up, but especially once you get to know an engine and you're just kind of going to town, cleaning parts, making cool torque wrenching, clicking sounds. It's a good time. Oil pan number two is about to go on. I'll lay down a little bead of our RTV. Wee! All right, make the connection, I'm home. We're sealing up this pan now. We'll line up those bolt holes and we'll start everything by hand. The last pan is going on. I just noticed this right now. It says okay on it. What in the world? I think there's a date, yeah, to that, oh, yeah, June. 2013, this was okay, and it's still okay. All right, guys, we are done for this evening. She's all buttoned up. Everybody's tired and hungry, so we will see you in the morning, which is just like, it's literally the next scene. It makes no difference to you guys at all. And just like that, it's the next morning, and yes, I'm going to wear the exact same outfit for this entire build. Uh, I just change every morning and just, I mean, why, why dirty up more clothes? But anyway, everybody is back at it. We have cleaned up the floor a little bit, done a little housekeeping, and uh, we're about to get some head studs in this beautiful M156 engine. And before the cylinder heads go on, we've installed these two gears. For this build and because we're boosting this engine, we are going to replace the factory head bolts with a much stronger head stud. And this is going to keep the head clamped down to the block so under boost, the heads don't lift up and our engine will last much longer. So for these head studs, we're gonna use an ARP fastener assembly lube on these bottom threads. So just a little bit like this. And the block is already super clean. We've blown out all of these holes once again. And we're gonna go ahead and just put this in until it bottoms out. And you can use a little eight mil on a small ratchet to assist you. I wouldn't use a gun for this though. All right, right there when it bottoms out, that's it. We're not torquing the stud into the block. That is good right there. Stud cheers. Helps to have a couple of studs installing these. <laughs> All the head studs are installed and I always think a short block with head studs sticking out just looks so menacing. Before the head gaskets go on, we have a little bit of silicone to add and one on the other side as well. And because we cleaned the engine so well, the cylinders were dry, so I've added some engine assembly lube all the way around each one. I spun the engine around to get to the pistons that were up at that time. So this is all protected for our first start. Factory head gasket number one going in. And these are factory multi-layer steel gaskets. No real reason to do anything outside of this. This is going to hold boost just fine. Head gasket number two going on. Now, because we're using the VRP head studs, we have to use RTV on these top threads for it to seal out the coolant. All right, guys, our freshly machined cylinder heads are ready to go. So these were resurfaced, cleaned, checked, and they're good. They're good M156 cylinder heads. Now we have to be careful we don't smudge up all of this RTV. A second person definitely helps kind of guide it in. All right. What's going on? Before we put the head down, Rusty just checked in there to make sure we didn't spread any RTV all over the place and we are good. So now we can gently bring it down. The cylinder head's down, let's get the other one on. And we do have about an hour, hour and a half of working time with the RTV and the thread. So you're not in any kind of crazy rush, but you definitely wanna get the job done. There you go. Okay. If you guys are doing studs and your head isn't sitting flush with the block and you know 100% that your dowels aren't hanging up, it's most likely because of the manufacturing process of the studs. They aren't 100% straight until you push them down. So right now we have a washer that we put some RTV on. Top and bottom. And we're using this long extension to guide it down. And you can see that helps it slide right over the stud. RTV on the bottom of the nut as well going in there's a top and bottom to these washers as well this is the bottom the rounded side is the top and now by tightening this gently by hand we can pull this in again if this hangs up at all or you think it might be the dowels hanging up don't do this this is only if you know it's because of the studs and this happens a lot with studs all of the nuts and washers are installed and now we're just snugging them all up you have to follow a special sequence when torquing down the head so this is the front and this has three stages we're doing 55 newton meters 110 and then final stage 150. So we have one, two, three, and so on. There are a total 
of 10 on each head. You're gonna get a little exercise in when you do this. And this is definitely one of those jobs where you just wanna do the whole thing in one shot. Don't get distracted. Don't get called away by your kids. If you're doing this at home. Dad, make me a sandwich. Make your own sandwich. I'm twerking my head studs. Child, I'm on my final pass here, 150. This is when fatigue sets in, people. You gotta be strong. It's a mental game, really. Oh. All right, four. On number nine. And last one. Oh, the head is torqued. All right, both heads are torqued. This is looking like an engine again. Next up, we have camshafts. Before the cams go in, we have to install our final guide for the chain. And that one slides in this way. And we can kind of feed it on down. That's disappearing. Now we need to line this pin up with the guide so it goes through the hole in the guide. And then I'm gonna push the guide through. You can see it's gonna hold that pin. To make sure the guide is in all the way, I've threaded in a bolt. And that's good. As soon as you hear that noise, you can hear it's bottomed out and we can pull the bolt out. There are four more head bolts. They're little guys. They go in after the main studs. And there's two here as well. And you just reuse these. There we go. Next we have our idler pin. Slides in like that. And there's one T30 that goes right in here. Okay. There we go. Rusty's getting the other side guide pins in, so I'm getting prepared for our tappets and our aftermarket cams. We're doing cams. Everything is nicely lubricated, including where the cam followers sit. And you can also call these lifters, tappets, buckets. And I went with the black series version. So you can see here, these are black and they are coated in an anti-friction material, less friction, more horsepower, and these come on the SLS black. And I mentioned this as the forged pistons being a performance pack car, but this also gets the forged crankshaft and the rods from the SLS as well. So now we can install the black series tappets, buckets, lifters, or followers. Pick your poison, they slide in like that. And I like to soak these in oil for a few hours before they go in. We want everything very, very well lubricated. The Black Series lifters are installed and they just look so cool. They look way cooler than these Silver Series lifters. That's not what they're called at all. And these lifters do just fine. I don't know, not really. Everything in the valve train on the M156 can go bad. The cams can go bad, the lifters, the camshaft actuators were, Pretty much fixing all of that right now. But if you're doing this job, I would definitely pony up for the Black Series because these can get stuck in place because of friction. It's typically from engines that aren't maintained, but if they get stuck in place, that's when they start to wear out and get destroyed. But my car was maintained, so you can see how they spin so freely. Let's go ahead and get our harmonic balancer back on, and then we can set this crankshaft up to 40 degrees before top dead center. And you do wanna replace this bolt. It's one time use only. And before we go ahead and put a ton of torque on our new harmonic balancer bolt, we have to install our new AMG chain tensioner. And it goes right in the block here. It's got a lot of threads. It takes a while to thread in. There it goes, use a socket that makes life a lot easier. And this gets torqued to a cool 75 newton meters. Now to torque the harmonic balancer requires a crazy contraption like this to counter hold it. This is Rusty's handiwork using an exhaust hanger or three, it looks like. It works. All right, so first stage is 147 Newton meters. I don't have a breaker bar or a pipe to fit over this, so I just have to be strong about it. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. We have to do 250 Newton meters now. I have a long extension and a socket that should help. Ready when you are. Yeah. Now you actually have to loosen the bolt up. So we just seated everything. Now it's loose again. Now we're going back at it with 200 Newton meters. And the floor is really helping me out here. Yeah. Now they say you need a 180 degree turn, which is like physically impossible. We've tried this before. We'll just see how far we can get. Well, I'll tell you. What'd you get, Rusty? 50. Oh my gosh, that was a little 50. more. A little more. Eighty. All right, we got it. Come on now. 
Okay, so that's 90, guys. I don't know how people get another 90. Um, it's always been a crazy spec to me, and we've set it up like this and never had any issues. Craig's car's got like 800 horsepower for 10,000 miles. No problem, so we're good. Now we need to set this up in preparation for timing the engine. So we're gonna go to 40 degrees right there. So you're lining this line up that says 40 with this right here in the front cover. To pair up with the Black Series lifters, drink every time I say Black Series lifters, we have the VRP Street camshafts. So Victory Road Performance takes the factory camshafts and has them reground for more lift and duration. So they actually weld up the cam lobes and regrind these so they're stronger than stock. This is an excellent option if your cams are bad because they're very expensive and hard to find. And these are still totally streetable cams, so it's not gonna be lumping your car around, but it is gonna sound a little bit different. They're good for about 20 horsepower NA across like the entire power band, so we should be able to rev this engine even higher with these cams. And they're coated as well. I am so pumped to have cams and a blower on my C63. Before the cams go in, we are adding a little bit of engine assembly lube on the lobes and the journals everywhere. You can't really overdo it with engine assembly lube or oil before that first start. Now we can gently install our cam and I've kept all of these caps in order. So we'll hand tighten these and don't worry if the cam is not laying down perfectly flat just yet. It's because lobes are hitting the lifters at different angles. Rusty's doing the driver's side cam shafts and I have an exhaust cam left on this side. There we go. Now this cap is used for both the intake and the exhaust. It's one big cap. Last one going on. Right now we're snugging all the bolts down by hand. This is what I call hand-built AMG. Cam bolts are all snug down. I like to start in the middle and then work my way around the outside. Take your time with this and do it by hand. With everything snug down and even, we can go ahead and torque these. They just get torqued to 10 newton meters. It's a very small bolt. And again, we're gonna be working from the inside to the outside. But we're gonna put a temporary pause on the camshafts and timing and do some other things while we wait for our new camshaft adjuster plates. While we wait on some parts, I can start to reassemble the front of the engine. We have this breather tube right here for the PCB. Next, I'm gonna install a new water pump gasket. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have my assistance here. And water pump going on. There we go. Okay. Water pump is torqued. Let's get our pulley on. Water pump pulley going on. Thermostat housing going back on. We're gonna be blocking off the secondary air injection with these cool VRP block off plates. And these are just sealed with a little bit of RTV. Next up are all of the engine pulleys and the belt tensioner. FCP Euro sells a really nice kit. And this way we won't have to worry about pulleys going out later that are kind of difficult to reach once you get the engine back in the car. And yes, I took a picture of where all the pulleys go. Now at this point, we are flying. I finished installing all of the new pulleys. A new seal went in the oil filter housing, a new belt tensioner. The alternator went back in, oil cooler pipes were bolted in, the power steering pump, the AC compressor, and we even hung the engine harness. It's getting real, people. It's getting real. The majority of the engine is built. We just have the cam adjuster plates hopefully coming in tomorrow. Uh, and then we can get the valve covers on, the supercharger, the transmission with a phone on it, and everything else. It's gotta go on that cradle and back in this car. So what you guys just saw in this video is two full days of work. So Tuesday and Wednesday. It's Wednesday right now at about 7.30 at night and uh, we are beat. But I can't wait to show you guys what Craig has been working on behind the scenes in the next video. Uh, and then we'll get the blower on, the transmission, we'll get it all back together. And uh, I have no idea if we're gonna make this dyno on Friday. It just, it doesn't seem very possible right now, but we're gonna work our butts off to try and make it happen. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying the C63 series thus far. And if you are, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, try to get way more sleep than we're getting this week. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video.
If you guys missed the first video, then here's what you missed. That doesn't make any sense. Should we do this scene right now and leave Craig like that in the background? Yeah. <laughs> Blur that out. <laughs> we're gonna take the uh, engine mounts. We're gonna take the top of the engine mount bolts. We're gonna take the top bolt. So yeah, we had a little, we had a little, we had a little bit of an oil leak in this area here that we are. Uh, hey. we what do you want a, a show here? We're in a show. Oh, Jesus. Quiet on the set. Jeez. <laughs> here is everything for the timing. Here is everything for the timing that needs. Here's everything that's under. Here's everything we're replacing underneath. No. Here's everything we're replacing behind the front timing cover. Yeah. You guys know where you put these bolts? Um, I mean, oh, I'd like okay. to say yes Here. right now. Is that song stuck in your head now? No, 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 no. steps. Ah, no. Just more footage for Max to sift through. <laughs> Turn off air compressor, or I can't film. <laughs> I love Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> 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 <laughs>